Good morning. It's nine o'clock and today is the Growth Infrastructure and Waste Committee, the fourth one for this year. And it's the 13th of May, 2021. I'm delighted to see that um, the configuration on the table with uh, COVID restrictions <laughs> reducing, that we have been able to put another councillor here and only have the, I guess, the two smaller tables um, out there. So we, we look forward to be able to have everyone around the one table. I do council attendance. I see that all the councils are in, in attendance and there are no apologies. I now go to declarations of interest in matters on the agenda. Are there any declarations of interest? There being none, we'll move on to business outstanding and there is no business outstanding. We'll then move on to the confirmation of minutes. So we're looking at the confirmation of minutes of the Growth Infrastructure and Waste Committee, which is the third one of the year of the 15th of April. 2021. Would anyone like to speak to the relevant council officer on these minutes? No. May I ask for a mover, please? Thank you, Councillor Fechner. May I have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Milligan. Is there any discussion on those minutes? There being none, I'll put the matter to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. And the vote is unanimous and carried. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is item two, and a bit of a longer title. The subject is Development Application Recommendation 191 and Lot 4 Whitwood Road, 62 Austin Street, 217 Barclay Street, Newcham, uh, 6216-2018-MAMC-A, Minor Change to Special Industry, in brackets, Chemical Manufacturing, and ERA seven chemical manufacturing. Would anyone like to speak to the, I shall ask for the relevant council officer to come to the lectern for that one. Good morning. Would you please state your name and title please. Uh, Anthony Bowles, 18 Development and Planning Manager. Thank you very much. Now there's a lot of paperwork, like a bit of history with this Mr Bowles. Mm -hmm. um, I guess my main question is this, this um, minor change, what's the impact to local residents? Uh, the, the change is quite minor. I would expect the impacts of this change to be negligible um, to residents. Uh, the original approval was granted uh, recently in 2019 uh, for the main development approval, which was also approved by the state um, as part of the referral agency process. Uh, the use has been carried out um, in the intervening period, mm -hmm. uh, the original approval allows for up to 10,000 tonnes of uh, material to be produced. Uh, the constraints of the site have prevented them from reaching that um, threshold mm -hmm. due to lack of space to manoeuvre vehicles safely and efficiently. Mm -hmm. So the change increases the manoeuvring area or the storage mm -hmm. areas as well for the um, storage of some of the chemical components. So. Uh, there's an additional fenced storage area where chemicals are able to be stored uh, and uh, basically an additional security fence creating two cordoned off areas uh, and a parking area relocation out the front. Um, in, in the scale of changes to the operation, minimal and I expect no change to the effect on the residents. Okay. It looked like it would make the site safer. Would that be a... Fair yeah, assessment? I would say so. Um, the additional security fences uh, are a good approach to dealing with trespassing. Mm. Uh, there are some more bonded areas to prevent mm -hmm. uh, egress of materials into uh, external to the site, essentially. Mm -hmm. So uh, it does improve the safety. Um, admittedly, the original approval had measures to um, ensure mm -hmm. the safety of the operation in the first place. So the extension of the safety measures has been carried out in addition with the extension of the um, okay. storage areas. Um, who will be managing compliance to make sure that, that this um, waste operator, well, this, sorry, waste, but, but this operator is, um, does everything in regards to the environmental approvals and the development approvals they have? So uh, for the bulk of the environmental aspects and the, uh, the part that may have the biggest um, impact on the environment will be Department of Environment and Science. Mm -hmm. As a part for the impacts of the land use, so mm -hmm. traffic, dust and things like that, we will have some component in that and mm -hmm. the the, the way the land use is operated, mm -hmm. we will be involved in compliance with that. But concerns about non-compliance with the storage or handling of chemicals and things like that will be managed by the Department of Environment and, so okay. and Science. 
And what approvals have the state government given on this? So they have uh, an ERA, so... Mm -hmm. Could you uh, expand on that, please? Yes, yeah, so an environmentally relevant activity uh, for chemical manufacturing. So uh, the the ability that they have from that is to... Um, there's one, two, three, four chemicals that they're able to um, produce, which comes about from mixing of precursor or um, more base materials that are stored on the site. So the mm -hmm. chemical manufacturing allows them to mix components of those chemicals to create their product. Um, so there's storage areas and there's combining vats, essentially, which mm -hmm. are held in concrete buns. So the ERA allows that manufacturing of the chemical from the original mm -hmm. components. So will this, will this change negatively impact the health of residents around there? Or make things the, so I don't believe the change will. Um, and the original use was approved on the basis that it wouldn't. OK. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Right. Just a question around the terms of the and, and conditions of the state government approval. How um, often are, are officers likely to be government officers on site conducting checks and compliances? Uh, I, I can't speak for their compliance regime. I'll just quickly check the conditions and see if it's in there. But th they, um, I would say that they operate in a similar manner to we do, which is relatively reactive compliance, but there are state um, set um, inspection regimes for some of these chemicals um, because they need to be stored in a specific way um, because they can be hazardous otherwise. Uh, in terms of the frequency of the... Um, there we go, let's get that. Inspections, I'll just see if that's included in the decision notice. So I, I might have to take that question on notice just to get that from the conditions of Can I the. Can that question group. for the secretariat? You like that? Thank you. Um, that may not be set in the conditions. That, that might be up to the uh, to decide when they have those the frequency of those inspections. Uh, so I'll have to confirm that with you. I'm sorry. Thank you. Just um, trying to get some comfort. Um, uh, around, yes, frequency of inspections and rather than reactive and relying on a complaint, for instance, by a resident, um, I would hope that, that you know, where possible, local and state government are on site conducting uh, checks. Well, uh, our program for uh, compliance is a little bit more regimented in the waste mm -hmm. space at the moment because the frequency of complaints and the, the need to be proactive. So okay. from our perspective, we we have fairly consistent in our um, inspections, but that is the limit of our jurisdiction, so we, we wouldn't be inspecting you know, the chemicals or any of the precursor components. No, that's right, yeah. Thank you. Any other questions of Mr Bowles? No, thank you very much. Good. Thank you. So the recommendation here is that Council approve development application number 6216-218-MAMC-A, slash subject conditions as detailed in attachment 2 in our paperwork here, the change approval decision notice and attachment 3 approved plans. May I have a mover, please? Thank you, Council Island. A seconder? Thank you, Council Johnick. I'll leave the matter up for discussion. Need any the discussion? I'll put the matter to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. Thank you. It's unanimous and carried. We'll move to item three, which is the Ifrit City Centre parking trial outcomes. And the, there are three recommendations. I recommend that we put them uh, to, together. Uh, a is that the report be received and the contents noted. B, that the 15-minute free parking grace period for parking areas within the Eastwood City Centre, as outlined in the report by the senior engineer, date of the 20th of April 21, remain in effect. And C, that no timed and priced parking on Saturdays within the Eastwood City Centre, as outlined in the report by the senior engineer, date of the 20th of April 21, remain in effect. Would anyone like to speak to the relevant council officer on this matter? No. May I ask for someone to move 
this motion. Thank you, Councillor Doyle and Councillor Milligan seconding. I'm going to leave the matter open for discussion. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Just, you know, we um, have received um, enormous positive feedback from the community, in particular, um, majority of business operators within the CBD. So we uh, welcome the uh, free trial <clears throat> period to continue. We did have to work with a number, a, a small number of business owners who relied on the 15 minute turnover of parking mm. just through the nature of their business, picking up, dropping off, um, and we implemented um, some restrictions there to support um, the way they operate their business. But outside mm. of that, it's been um, greatly um, appreciated by mm. the community. I agree. The feedback I've had anecdotally from the traders but also residents is that they really um, think it's been a great move. Um, and I just noticed, um, if you're looking at it from an <coughs> income perspective, which is not the, the point of that parking there, but in the six-month trial period, the average monthly income generator was... So we're going to... Discount, uh, was 94300 um, And the average income, I guess, uh, was approximately 110000 a month. I guess when you look at COVID... <laughs> much of a muchness, so I'd say it was very negligible, yet we had, I think, rather large benefits mm -hmm. for the change. Absolutely. Yeah, it, through you, Mayor, yeah. um, I think it, it's important for us to think about how we're messaging this out to the community. Mm. Um, I um, Every Saturday I'm out in the morning and at least one or two people every Saturday are standing at the parking metres trying to pay for parking on a Saturday. So I think that right. there might be a bigger educational piece that we need to put um, okay. around um, these recommendations mm. and, and around this council decision um, to make sure that we're really reaping the full benefits mm. uh, of rolling something like this out. Now, I, I agree, so let's let people know. Mm. And I note the, some of the feedback... Um, from the community in, in the report saying that it's a great idea, it means I can more easily support small business like cafes um, and that the initiatives are, especially the 15-minute free parking, um, as sometimes that's all that's required to, to you know, drop into a business and that someone else, it's a fantastic idea, great for our customers to pick up gift vouchers and drop off our loved ones for appointments. So I think it's been a, a huge success. Is there any other discussion? I'll put the matter to the, all three recommendations to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. Thank you. It's unanimous and carried. We move on to item number four, which is the subject of the Capital Portfolio Financial Performance Report for <coughs> March 2021. And that recommendation is that the monthly financial performance report on the Infrastructure and Environment Department's Capital Portfolio Budget for 2020, 2021 be received and contents noted. May I ask for the relevant council officer to come to the lectern, please? I might ask Mr Madigan to come if that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I always want to know how that capital works program is going. <clears throat> Good morning, Sean Madigan, Acting General Manager of Infrastructure and Environment. Thank you. Um, thank you for this report, and I know that you're working very hard and, and, and some more of our capital works is being delivered. Mm. I guess I just have a, have a concern that we're looking at, you know, potentially spending up to 50% of our capital works yeah. in the last quarter. And Absolutely. if you could give, me, give mm. us an update. Yeah, so we, we are tracking, um, well, we believe tracking um, on target to, to achieve the um, budget um, that is indicated there. So whilst we're under um, for the month of of March, mm -hmm. um, the month of April was actually a very good month for mm -hmm. us. So we had a, a mm -hmm. uh, forecast of 9.5 million that we were targeting, mm -hmm. um, and we ended up with approximately 9 million. The right. underspends that we're looking at um, in there are more around our fleet. Um, so we're having difficulty procuring vehicles at present. Um, it's a worldwide mm -hmm. issue. Yes. Um, so our waste trucks, uh, basically, we are struggling to, mm -hmm. to source those internationally, um, and even vehicles locally. So. From a terms of a construction point of view and the actual capital program itself, um, for the month of, of April, um, we were actually uh, overspent uh, mm. on it, so we are ahead of schedule in relation to capital projects. The big risks um, that 
exist at present for us for the next two months are um, this unseasonal weather mm -hmm. uh, that we've been having. So the last uh, week we've had uh, inclement weather with the rain uh, is pretty unusual for this time of year uh, and that impacts uh, some of the work that we can do, particularly in the rehab and in the environmental space, um, working in waterways and the like. Uh, when we have this wet weather, it makes it very mm. difficult, uh, as well as bridge and, and culvert rehab. Um, the other risk we have is the, the cold weather. So when a, a program like this, um, with in terms of road rehab, so once, once the uh, effectively temperature reaches a certain uh, level, uh, it, it reduces our ability to actually go in and do our road reseals and road resurfacing. Um, yet again, that is a problem of, of having a, a program which is you know, back-ended, um, where mm. you're trying to deliver the majority of your, your program. There's not a lot of, of wiggle room there that's available. Um, and you know you have a bit of wet weather and then if it gets colder earlier than expected uh, it creates issues for us having said that um, we, ha we had a meeting yesterday on our capital program and we do remain confident uh, that we will uh, track towards very close to the the budget uh, that has been set and we're taking re sort of remedial action to ensure that we achieve what we're trying to achieve uh, one of the positives uh, i think it's also worth highlighting the positives so um, in the month of, of uh, March and then April, we also completed the works on South Station Road, um, which was a significant upgrade uh, for us and it was a significant impact to the community. Uh, that project was completed on budget and one month ahead of time. Uh, well done. And we're opening, officially opening that road back up to public uh, this afternoon uh, with a bit of a, a celebration there. Uh, with locals um, and the divisional councillors. So mm -hmm. there are a lot of positives going on at the moment. Um, in addition to that, what we are doing is preparing for next financial year. So we are starting um, and implementing um, designs and, and commencing procurement uh, of projects for next financial year at this stage, um, which is, isn't something that necessarily occurred last financial year. What that will mean is that with the contracts we have in place through procurement, uh, and the capital program, we will be able to continue the works uh, and commence them much earlier. So we aim to be constructing um, next year's capital portfolio in the months of approximately August and September instead of commencing those in February. Mm. Um, and that, for obvious reasons, um, enables us to, to more effectively deliver the capital program that we commit to deliver. Okay. Um, Ms Muddy, you mentioned cold weather. We're in Queensland, so can you explain to me why our road projects, our capital, would, would slow down in a, in a Queensland winter? I mean, what, what happens in Tasmania and, and other areas? What, how does that impact how we deliver roads? Um, I might... much of a road engineer. No, no, no. <laughs> no, I, I or is it, more the, is it more the wet weather? Because I know you no, can't no, bulldoze it's, mud. It's the cold weather and, and the fact of... Uh, the, it's explained to me, effectively, that you need a certain temperature for the, the road rehab and road se reed seal, resprays to actually be right. effective. Okay. Once the, the sort of ambient temperature reaches a certain temperature okay. and the, the concrete underneath and the road surface okay. is too cold, then it can't it can, work. And it contracts. And Absolutely, okay. yeah. So oh, I don't have the engineering detail there, but in, that's my high-level summary of it. Okay. Thank you, Mr Madigan. Um, and, and also note that recently uh, we had a bit of a barbecue with the, the mower men, I guess the mowing team. Um, and thank you for organising that. It was really interesting to hear from from them. There's so many of the, the, the team there have been working six days a week, 12-hour days, for the last, I think, 14 weeks or so, um, to get on top of the mowing. And I know they're looking forward to the new equipment and having a few more people on the team. So I just yeah, want to, absolutely. if you could sort of pass on the thank you to our, our teams who've really had to deal with thousands of extra queries and a, and a lot of work. And thank you for the, the overtime that they've been doing and working six days a week. Thank you, man. Um, are there any other questions of Mr Madigan? Thank you, Mr Madigan. Thank you. May I ask for the Acting General Manager of Corporate Services, please? Good morning, Madam Councillors. Jeff Keats, the Acting General Manager of Corporate Services. Mr Keats, next month is the end of the financial year. Yes. Um, is there anything to, that concerns you in this report? Um, nothing more that you haven't us. discussed with Mr Madigan. I think the key risk as highlighted would be around the fleet um, and the yep. timing and the okay. delivery of the fleet seems to be the key aspect okay. at the moment. And as has been highlighted, there is significant expenditure underway and that will be tracked and monitored over the next couple of months. Okay. Um, so nothing more than that hasn't been spoken about already. Okay. Yep. So we should expect a lot, lot more of the Capital Works Program to be delivered? That's that's the forecast, and yep, and it's, and it's certainly underway. We're starting to see the works being delivered and the expenditure coming through. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions of Mr Keach? 
No, thank you very, very much. Thank, thank you. you. Go back to the recommendation. May I have someone who will move the recommendation of the report? Thank you, Councillor Wigan. A seconder. Thank you, Councillor Doyle. Any discussion on, the, on this matter? There being no other discussion, may I please? Uh, I'll put the matter to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. It's unanimous and carried. Thank you. Item five is the exercise, exercise of delegation report and the re recommendations that the report be received and contents noted. Does anyone have any questions of the relevant council officer for this item? <coughs> no? May I ask for a mover, please? Thank you, Councillor Fickner. A seconder. Thank you, Councillor Johnick. Are there any questions about this delegations report? Oh, sorry, any discussion? No, I'll put the matter to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. It's unanimous and carried. Thank you. We now move on to the last item, item six, which is the uh, Planning and Environment Court Action Status Report. And that recommendation is that the report be received and contents noted. Would anyone like to speak to the relevant council officer on this matter? Yes, I Thank you. May we ask for the relevant council officer to... Do you mind stating your name and title again, please? Uh, Anthony Bowles, 18 Planning and Development Manager. Council Tully. Yeah, just one question about uh, the notice of appeal for 40 Queen Street, Dinmore. I see that's actually on for hearing today in the uh, Planning and Environment Court, although the judge has got 15, 15 other, 14 other matters that are being considered. Is that just a one day, do you think that's a one day hearing? Um, or is that going to uh, drag on? So it's, it's been 12 months since the, uh, over 12 months since the appeal was received. Uh, so, I, just to confirm, we're referring to register number 164? Four. Four? Correct. Yes. Queen Street, yep. That's right. Yeah. Uh, it's expected to be resolved today. Um, so, the um, court review, uh, there was actually a notification a little while ago um, recommending that we move to a um, consent order. We've been in the process of resolving matters relating to the, the mining constraint. Um, so, I would expect that the next report will show that matter resolved. So it isn't necessarily a hearing, it's just a review and um, so the directions I expect would be along the lines of um, the next uh, order will be to present draft conditions um, for consent order. Now I don't want to go into the details of that for obvious reasons but, but were we aware that there was a major sinkhole from former coal mining operations about 10 or 15 metres from that property? That's some, right. Some, over a so decade ago. That's one of the big difficulties with this matter, was uh, defining the area of um, mining influence and how that can be resolved um, through engineering or s simply staying away from it. Um, so that is, that's exactly why it's taken as long yeah. as it has. Thank you. Mm. Okay. Mr. Bosch, bring your, notes, your um, attention to, I guess, Register 153 with Landtrack, as well as um, mm -hmm. 156 with Clean Away and 160 with... Oh, so that's the, the joint mm -hmm. action that's commenced this week, is that, that correct? That's right. So, um, And I think members of the public can attend that absolutely. in Brisbane, is that correct? Yes, Court yes. 33, Floor 8, if you'd like yes. to go right now. <laughs> I'm going to get on my yep. get on the train and go have a look myself, maybe, because yes. <laughs> it's, um, it's going to be a very interesting appeal. Yep. Some parts will be a little dry. Uh, it goes for six weeks, but uh, opening statements are this week, mm -hmm. uh, and then we'll be moving into the experts' Um, witnesses. So, okay. uh, yes, members of the public are absolutely welcome to go, um, and several of our officers will be attending because it's, it's very relevant to us. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other questions, Mr. Bowles? Thank you. Oh, thank you. Councillor Island? Yeah. So, is it a comment or a question? No, just a comment. I'll let, I'll let uh, Mr. Bowles. Oh, it's done it again. Yes, I will have that fixed. There is something happening with our system, unfortunately. Apologies. Yes, I can see that. Division 8 no, no longer exists. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Island. Oh, Councillor Island, five, speaker isn't on. Oh, Councillor Island, your microphone's not on. Do you mind repeating the, what, your comment? <laughs> Through the me. Um, could I please have Division 8 at the very end of the report move to Division 1, please? Yes, uh, I will have that fixed. Apologies for the inconsistency there. Thank you, Councillor Island. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you, Mr Bowles. May I ask for a mover of this recommendation? Thank you, Councillor Fechner. And a seconder, Councillor Kunzelman. Thank you. 
Would anyone like to make any comments or discussions? There being no discussion, I'll put the matter to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. It's unanimous and carried. Thank you very much. There are uh, we're up to notices of motion. There are nil. Uh, there are no matters arising. There are another, no procedural motions and formal matters. So we'll finish this meeting now at 9.25 and the next meeting will start at 9.35. Thank you very much. <laughs>